remember getting up that morning on 888 in 2008, and I turned on CNN and they said, Russia has attacked Georgia. And, and even Alex Jones, two years ago, bought into it for about an hour. I, I mean, I couldn't imagine that they're that bold at lying, that they would get on the news and say, Russia has attacked. And then I went to the BBC and the London Telegraph and to the Russian news, and in every other country, in the Japanese news, it was the truth. It was that overnight, they had gone into the UN-held area, South Ossetia, they tried to get into Abkhazia, and they even had peacekeepers in the bases who would do the old special forces technique and walk right up behind the Russian troops and stab them in the back and throw hand grenades in their barracks. And they had the uh, unguided missile batteries firing in, and it was all public that Georgia had launched that war and that Israeli, U.S., and NATO forces were there. And then the announcement was made that NATO forces were going to go in and the Russians pulled in, rolled in their mobile nukes, and said, we're going to, and they had the top Russian general come out and say, we're prepared to use nuclear weapons, and then the West backed off. Now again, Russia's corrupt and has all its own problems. I criticize Russia every day. This isn't like, oh, America's good, so we need nuclear war with the Russians. The issue is they think the public is so dumb that they would launch a false flag in plain view, knowing that the world would discover the truth within hours that a premeditated attack was launched by U.S.-backed Georgian forces into a Russian-held area, killing peacekeepers that had been there since 1991. Think of the magnitude of that. And then, a week ago, and the AP's even reported on this, for those out there watching, on state-controlled TV, they ran a newscast saying Russia had attacked again. And it was just all completely fake. And finally, the Georgians are mad. They're protesting by the tens of thousands, saying this was a false flag staged event, just like 9-11. So now it's a Orson Welles War of the Worlds mind control, where they don't even have to attack Russia and then say that Russia attacked. They just run newscasts saying Russia has attacked to somehow instill fear in the public. That's how dangerous these individuals are that we are facing as a society. That's how evil these individuals are. Their lust for power, they've got all the money, all the women, all the land, all the caviar they can eat. And for them, they love sitting around their electronic maps of the world playing games with our lives like we're their little toys, to borrow a phrase from Bob Dylan. And I'm not their toy. I have a wife and three children. I'm somebody who loves the truth and who loves to stand up against corruption, not because I'm even some wonderful good guy. I, I'm not twisted. I have a basic self-preservation mechanism. I like things to be fair. I know that you need to stand up against corruption. I know you need to stand up against tyranny. Because in every case in history, when you don't stand up against tyranny, it always goes to the extreme. Tyranny doesn't stop. Once you bend to evil, it goes all the way. It happened in Russia. It's happened in China. It happened in Germany. It's happened in Cambodia. It's happened in Cuba. It's happening in Venezuela. Hugo Chavez is becoming a bona fide tyrant. His excuse is he's fighting the Western tyrants. And so what you have is globally all these tyrants propping each other up. The excuse of, well, they're tyrants, so we're going to be tyrants. Well, they're tyrants, so we're going to be even greater tyrants. We've got to bodyguard the truth with lies. And the end justifies the means and the noble lie. What, two years ago, a 2004 Pentagon Army Manual for Captains and Above came out. And in there it lists how to stage false flags. If you're having trouble with... Local insurgents getting too much popularity, stage a massacre, blame it on them. This is standard issue now in our government, just like a canteen and an M16. At captain and above level, if you were compartmentalized in those areas, you were taught how to stage terror attacks. Remember 2006? It was in the London Guardian and the BBC, British SAS, Special Air Services, the combat arm of MI6 was caught dressed up like Muslims running around shooting people on the streets of Basra to get sectarian violence between Shiite and Sunni going. And I could go on and on and on. And until we fully break the back of the 9-11 lie, until we expose the Hegelian dialectic of problem, reaction, solution, 
things are only going to get worse. But we are now approaching that tipping point. The system realizes that, that the majority of people are starting to question. They're starting to ask who stands to gain, qui bono, from Latin, who benefits. And soon, they're not going to be able to use this tool anymore. And this is their number one tool and mechanism of control. And so that's why now, before they start shutting down the web, before they stage terror attacks and blame it on 9-11 truth, now is the time for us to be on record that we understand their attack profile, we understand their past operations, and we know what's coming. Just as I... Just as I was able to predict two months before 9-11 that they would specifically target the World Trade Center and blame it on their asset, some of bin Laden, I'm telling you now, as I've been saying for three months, they are going to stage terror attacks and blame it on 9-11 truth. But that isn't something to get scared of when they do it. That is a sign of them failing, of their system falling. And because we're here before it happens, laying out what the enemy's going to do, more people are going to listen to us, and this tool of false flag terror is on the verge of dying. It is hanging on by its fingernails because of all of you. And I salute you, and I thank you for being here, and I want to thank architects and engineers and all their great supporters. 1,100, it'll be 10,000 in a year. You watch. We are never going to stop, and that's the final word. Sure, if you're prominent in this, there's some danger. Danger of demonization, danger of audits, danger of physical attacks, whatever. But freedom and liberty is worth it because it leads to certain destruction to give in to corruption and to bow to it. The safest course is to fight 110%. But for you, the individual, you are safe. And the more people you wake up, the safer you are. Safer from the fake terror. Safer from the wars that grow out of the fake terror and safer from the jack-booted thugs that they're trying to forge. Because the military and police I'm talking to, in vast numbers, randomly on the street, are becoming fully awake. Freedom is on the march. God bless you all. Thank you for coming out today.